Hey there, so this is a Farfisa Pergamon, an all electronic analog organ from Italy, around 1980 I think, or maybe 81. Unfortunately I have to get rid of this one, but before I do, I want to give you a little tour of the instrument, because I think it's quite remarkable. An organ like this represents in my opinion, the height of analog um, sound technology. This was maybe one of the last big all analog organs before digital took over. And it also explains why the thing is just huge and massive and it doesn't really come across on video. I mean, the Wikipedia page for this one says 200 kilograms or like 400 pounds. I haven't weighed it myself, but um, it's very heavy to carry. And this also explains why I need to let go of it. It's just because for space reasons and the room I have it in is, has turned into a construction site already. So it needs to find a new home now. And before the new owners come pick it up, let's dive into it and um, go through all the sounds it can do. Well, there were certainly many um, large electronic home organs like this one made back in the day. And this particular one here is special to me because it seems to be one with like the, the largest feature set or one of the like almost top of the line model. So you will often see smaller ones with less features. And this Pergamon here is pretty decked out. Let's have a look. So if we start at the bottom, we have obviously the small uh, bass register pedal uh, to be operated by foot. Next to it is a volume swell pedal. This is like the master volume of the organ. Fun fact here, I don't know if I can see it, but on the tip there are two switches on either side. You can operate with your toes and we'll get into that later. If we check the bottom of the, um, of the manual table or whatever you want to call it, you have this interesting contraption which folds out and you can operate it with your knee to switch functions. And on the left side there's a little hidden panel with headphones, master volume and also the light switch you saw me flick in the beginning. Speaker wise we have a huge 15 inch bass speaker. Um, this one that looks tiny compared to it is a 10 inch like broad range whatever all the other frequencies basically. And on the left, this is more important, those two squares, there's an actually rotating Leslie speaker in there, or like a speaker and a rotating drum, made by the, the real Leslie company. So this is one of those main key features that really makes the organ interesting and stand above the competition, basically. On top here, we have the usual two manuals and a ton of functions. The most important bit is this one here, the cancel section. You pretty much have all the basic functionality of the organ here and you can like switch all the parts on and off. So those would be the two register uh, manuals, the lower manual and upper manual, you can switch them on. It also says draw bars, draw bar and percussion. Draw bars are those things, we'll get into that. This is like the basic core organ tone to use those two. Then there will be a piano and guitar section, a brass and what does it say? Brass and accordion section, a string section, and a monophonic synthesizer. In addition, you have this upper row here, up to here, which is like a drum and rhythm machine. On the right is the mono synthesizer we talked about. Then those Controls in the middle are for the guitar and piano, like basically polyphonic synthesizer instruments. Over here are some couplers where you can double the manuals together or switch the sound from one manual to another or switch the sound to the pedals, whatever. Some random controls, vibrato section, master tuning for both the synth and the overall organ tone. So you can tune it by about uh, I don't know, a half step or something in each direction. On the bottom here is a pretty interesting thing. They call it the vocal chorus, which is, 
how to describe it sounds a bit like a string section mixed with yeah with an actual like a choir sound it's pretty cool on the left hand side up here this section is for pedal volume and sustain like the bass pedal we saw before that and those are like the registers for the bass pedal so you can switch in different uh, like organ sounds and string bass electric bass saxophone whatever and this key is important you can switch manual bass which uh, disengages the bass pedals below and switches um, the bass sound to the lower manual so you can play it by hand. Down here, those funny colored ones are modulations. This is like uh, almost like a chorus effect you can add to certain sections. You can add it to the piano, to the brass, to the strings and to the synthesizer. And down below here what they also call modulation this is the Leslie section. You can switch lower manual and upper manual to the Leslie. If you don't do that, it comes out of the regular 15 inch speaker and 10 inch speaker. And then there's like the motor on off and slow and fast. So those in conjunction with the draw bars are basically the core sound and the most important bit of the organ. Finally, there's this um, like factory preset section here. If you press one of those, it switches on the little um, numeric panel there. Those are like factory set and I don't think you can actually change them or at least I haven't figured it out. It must be like hardwired into the organ. So yeah. I'm not a keys player, but I will try my best to give you a little bit of an impression of the different sounds this thing can make. Yeah, quick and easy recording setup here. Later on I put some microphones on the Leslie side as well. But for now, let's get into it. Let's start with the mono synthesizer section up here. Basically we're going right to left on the cancel switches. The synthesizer will be the first one. What do we have here? At first there's a row of buttons for different instruments. Those are basically like waveforms. Then there will be a tremolo and a noise switch. General volume. Brilliance and emphasis are the filter, LFO as you would expect from most synthesizers. So this is the filter frequency and this is like the resonance. Then you get attack and decay, self-explanatory as well as portamento. And finally, the LFO section has a master speed control and you can modulate, um, you can basically use it as a vibrato, so you modulate pitch or you can use it as a VCF, modulate the filter. And then there's a, a tuning for the synthesizer. So let's try to get some sounds going. Let's start with electric guitar, get some volume up and open up the filter fully and see what we get. see what the filter does. Obviously this entire thing is monophonic, which means you can just play one key at a time, there are no chords possible. So for instance... Right, it only tracks the, the key you pressed last. On the 
other inside you can like keep a low key pressed and do some stuff above that and will jump back and forth like like so. This is where the portamento comes into play. This is the time it takes to jump up and down. So some noise in there as well maybe how about uh, the LFL so if we get some speed going here we can first of all just modulate the pitch which will sound like that pronounced vibrato effect, right? If you engage the tremolo key on the other hand side, it will disengage the LFO and just give you tremolo. Back to the LFO. And instead of vibrato, let's modulate the filter. Yeah, nice. So as you can tell, you can really get some spaceship noises going here. <laughs> section of the organ like polyphonic synthesizer which can actually play chords or multiple keys together it's divided in three parts which have like their individual toggle switches which is like strings the yellow section then brass and accordion the red section nicely color-coded by the way and finally the piano and guitar on top here let's just quickly get some sounds and you can tell me if it sounds like an actual piano or not all right, so engage the piano and then the volume slider comes into play here. The light on top tells you that the slider is active. not touch sensitive and there's no real sustain you can uh, control in any way so there's just like a recorded noise of, of the piano key and it just results so whatever I do
it's always completely identical. a variation of the piano sound which is called harpsichord. I think um, you get the idea. Honky tonk of course. Enough of that. Electric guitar which engages a second slider up here which does brilliance. So electric guitar will give you this sound. Debatable. Classic guitar. there is an interesting glitch on the classic guitar. If you turn both up all the way, and I might have to readjust levels here a little bit. And engage the um, modulation, which is like I told you the chorus effect or something. Finally, it has the option to switch the piano to um, both manuals, upper and lower manual, and it will give you this insane type of sound. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy, right? It's, I might have to adjust the levels, but it's like this insane low end. It, Pretty much the best sound out of the whole poly section. The brass part is, uh, yeah, I don't know, like. glitchy. Yeah, there's something broken. Let's try the accordion maybe. String section. I think people might be interested for the string section. You have two sets of strings, like the eight foot and the four foot, which is like an octave above it. And they will have volume, brilliance, and a attack and sustain. So if we just get some sounds here going, mm, let's see. This is pretty usable in certain applications, I suppose. But I think if you were going for this type of a pad sound, it might actually be cool to use this vocal chorus instead, which is on the bottom corner here. Uh, you can switch it on separately from all the other controls. It has like three different presets. On the one, the light doesn't turn on anyways. Volume, attack and sustain. And it will do something like that. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Next up, a quick look at the um, rhythm section up here. So all this panel. In its most basic functionality, you have a bunch of pre-programmed rhythms here, which you can just select. Let's go for, I don't know, let's go for disco. Disco, of course, I mean, you turn it on, starts running, and you have to engage the volume. I can um, switch through different settings here. Each of them has like an A and a B version, so there's twice of that. There is a simple version as well, which is pretty cool. It reduces some of the um, percussion instruments in there. And you can trigger um, a break, which is like a fill. I will demonstrate here. Right? If you use those program keys here, it will um, toggle between like a, a certain number of repetitions of each section A and B before it switches back. You can also use a random switch for that. I don't know if you need it. If you engage the key start, it will automatically start once you hit one of the uh, lower manual keys. Um, but the more interesting section is if you engage those two keys over here, like the memory and the easy chord function, you can select a key on the lower manual. It will automatically play other instruments to make like a rhythm backing track in accord accordance to the selected rhythm. So there are a few other instruments you can select and you can um, select the volume of each and uh, kind of mix a backing track. It has a very... Uh, period sound and it's not super usable in modern music I think but I will just give you an impression okay all right So much for that. And this leads us, finally, at last, to the most important part, in my opinion, which is the drawbar section here. This is modeled after like the famous Hammond organ, which would have drawbars like that. You have two sets of these, one for the upper manual and a little bit of reduced set for the lower manual here. You have to engage those two keys, so those become active. And in case you don't know the numbers up here, you can see like 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Those would correspond to the length of a um, pipe in the pipe organ. And in this case, as you can tell, if you double the length, it halves the frequency of the vibration in the pipe. So each of those would be an octave below each other. For instance, the 8 foot register or whatever, or in this case drawbar, is usually considered like your home position on an organ. And I'm just running through the static speaker right now. But this should give you more of a 
static, I don't know, maybe church type sound almost. If we add some more octaves to that, The other draw bars in between here would be your corresponding thirds and fifths. So if we just go back to the bass setting, the 8 foot. With uh, those alone, you can probably set up something that's not too far off from like a church organ sound. Get a ton of reverb on there, of course. You get something like this. point of having two of those is to set up a different sound on the lower manual, maybe like a more mellow one and a little bit sharper sound for the right hand on the upper manual. So you can do something like this, um, I don't know. Then there's the option to add in vibrato to this and if you tweak the settings just right you can get much closer to um, the famous Farfisa sound that's known like from beat organ times in the 60s and something like that so there's a vibrato on it. You get the idea and a pretty cool function which is called vibrato delay and it engages the vibrato just a little bit after you press the key so listen to how it comes in you hear it's like flat at the beginning and then it starts doing this In case you don't want to play with your feet, it might make sense to use the bass register but put it on the lower manual. So you can engage like a 16 foot and an 8 foot for instance and hit this key which puts the bass on the lower manual. And then you will have a volume for the bass notes as well as a sustain lever here. For instance, if we start on the 8, it gives you a sound like that. So finally, let's hear the draw bars through the Leslie speaker and I got uh, stereo microphones on that. First of all, here's with the Leslie turned off.
preset on the lower manual as well. some reverb to remove Leslie as well. You have to activate it over here. There is also the option to add sustain to the draw bars here. percussion which is um, a little extra noise when you hit the key. The pick sound here will try to simulate a key click which is like the mechanical contacts of a Hammond organ making some noise when you press the key so and now Let's hear the Leslie ramping up and down between slow, which we used up to now, and fast, right? the sound and I think having a feature like that in an instrument uh, that you can get very cheap is actually pretty cool. I mean if I wanted a real Hammond organ and a real Leslie speaker to that it would add up to quite a bunch of money and this is not exactly the same thing I know but it gets me close and I enjoy the physical sensation in a room with a rotating speaker much better than any kind of digital simulation I can get of that. So yeah, this is basically what makes me so sad about having to give this organ away. But I hope the next person will enjoy it just as much as I did. And I hope you got something interesting out of this video at least. So thanks a lot for watching and see you again next time. 
Rồi Thank <music> you.